Hello and welcome to Morning Call for Friday the 22nd of February 2019. I'm Fab from Hamburg and I'm here to bring you the tech news of the day, everything that is important and uh, will be important. And uh, I hope you're doing well. I'm uh, having a bit of a flaky morning. I don't know, Some my system is being, being weird. Happens when you try to do things on windows i guess <laughs> anyway uh let's let's get into the news um and uh there, there isn't that much today i guess I, we ran through all of it yesterday uh, there was quite a quite a lot of news last yesterday good morning jay poser how are you doing um and today it's just kind of slow it's one of these slow fridays i guess but i got some some interesting stuff for you um first of all we get news um from from the uk and i'm i'm set to uh announce to you that it is politics news like all the news from the uk currently uh, have to do with politics there is no getting away from brexit um <clears throat> and uh labor the labor party has reported that um they have locked down uh their what the register calls them member databases this is uh tools they use software tools they use um to um plan campaigns and you know contact people and you know there's lots of personal information uh in there <laughs> there's no good news from the uk says jay poser everything is on fire pretty much seems like it uh, labor certainly is on fire um they had several mps leave the party and found a new thing called the in independent group and now um there there is there is there are rumor rumors or like the general secretary of the labor party jenny formby has alleged, um, she said that Labour has become, quote, become aware of a number of attempts to access personal data on its systems individuals who are, um, by individuals who are not or are no longer authorized to do so. Um, this sounds like, um, they certainly make it, make it sound like it was some of those MPs that broke away. Um, <laughs> Jay Poser. <laughs> Crickle says, no, this is fine. <laughs> uh, Jay Posa immediately, I wouldn't trust the word she says. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, as, you can, as you can tell, it's very heated. Uh, well, they're, they're definitely saying there has been a data breach. Um, I don't think it's, this is something they can uh, just make up because, um, I mean, as the register points out, um, GDPR, there will be... Oh, I clicked on, uh, on, on a tweet by accident there, sorry. Um, there will be um, there will be an investigation, and um, there I mean this is personal data. Um, also, it is data that um, identifies the political leanings of a person, which uh, in the UK is especially protected. I mean, not only under GDPR, uh, but also under. Let me look this up. The UK's Data Protection Act 2018. Uh, section 170 i guess um so there will be an investigation and there is actually a uh, quite strict um punishment on this um so uh somebody uh in november was uh register says in november must mustafa ahmed kazim a car industry worker used a colleague's login details to snag customer data and pass it to phone scammers was sentenced six months in prison after pleading guilty to the charge um, of causing a computer to perform a function with intent to secure or enable unauthorized access to personal data. So this is uh, this is a serious thing. It's a serious crime. 
Um, Jay Brother, Jay Brother, yes, Labour Party is a racist trash heap. Um, <laughs> and Jonathan goes, are they the baddies? Um, I think, um, not uh, to, to want to go too much into UK politics, but I think they're currently all the baddies. <laughs> Um, I don't really want to want to get into that um, into a political fight. I mean, it's um, it was it was hard to follow when I lived over there, and that was before Brexit. And now it's completely heated up, and um, and everybody is basically shitting on everybody's table. So I don't know. I just think this is a very interesting story, and we should keep an eye on on this. And I, I certainly will. Um, let me say everything i know about politics and about these kinds of situations and parties falling apart from like experience in germany i wouldn't be surprised if somebody went hey um we're leaving the party i'm gonna take some data with me um that i that we can use uh come the next election which will certainly come probably sooner than later with the things that are going on over there um and that might have not been such a premeditated and well thought out move. So it's a house of cards, says Crickle. It all is. That's what politics is. Politics is dirty business, but somebody has to do it. Um, let them be frank for a moment. <laughs> Looks into camera. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, definitely interesting story. Um, something to to keep an eye on in um, maybe less heated and con oh well maybe not <laughs> in other technology news um, so Microsoft had had a patch day recently and um, as part of this patch day it was revealed that Microsoft Edge the Microsoft browser um, has a well it does it blocks autoplay of Flash, like many browsers, for security reasons. And it was now revealed that it has a built-in hidden whitelist that had a number of websites on it, um, including um, Facebook, that would let those pages autoplay that Flash content. Um, Reem says, good morning, sorry I'm late, I had to make fresh coffee. That is a good, good choice. Uh, always... Coffee always very important. Also, you just missed some Brexit fight. It's not. It's not that bad. Um, yeah. So so they had a they had a white list where they would allow Facebook to play flash content. Now that Dnet is speculating that this is because of Facebook's um, legacy flash games. They still have quite a lot of those. Kind of makes sense. Interestingly enough, this site had this uh, uh, white list had fifty eight URLs on it. And some very obscure domains. Um, the guy who, uh, so the Google security researcher who discovered this, so he found a bug in that whitelist and told Microsoft, and they fixed it for Patch Day. And now he's talked about this, and in the whole thing, you know, it came out that that whitelist even exists. We didn't know that before. And he says, that, he says, for example, there was a site of a hairdresser in Spain on there. I wonder how the list was formed and if the Microsoft Security Response Center knew about it. Weird. Now, they changed this whitelist now. They fixed the bug, changed the whitelist, and it now only includes two Facebook domains. Um, now, interestingly enough, <laughs> oh, look, one more reason not to use Edge, says Reamed. Yeah, if, as if you needed more. <laughs> it's, God. Uh, um, yeah, I think it runs generally a bit better than Chrome and Firefox, like from the RAM requirements and but it's mostly because nothing works <laughs> it doesn't load anything into ram because it doesn't work most of the time <laughs> that's my personal experience um and uh interestingly enough um facebook has said uh so that dnet says when we reach out for comment a facebook space spokesperson said they didn't ask microsoft to be on the whitelist and they asked microsoft to remove facebook domains from the list now in the vein of uh, that saying about that labor person i wouldn't believe anything she says i wouldn't believe anything this facebook spokesperson says 
Um, it's brilliant for opening PDFs, says Crickle. That is true. That's I use Edge for that as well. Uh, more secure than all the other fucking PDF readers, pretty much, I guess. Um, for that, yeah, I, I do I do that. Yeah, that's um, that's good. Um, anyway, yeah, we, we I don't know if we can believe this Facebook person because in other news, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook CEO, uh, had a conversation um this got this got published uh, in 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 the harvard law today and they have a they have a picture i don't know what a conversation means but they have a picture of two guys together and this harvard professor is certainly very uh very happy to see a uh, creepy fishman zuckerberg with his creepy haircut and his creepy hands um <laughs> So they they they're sitting there in a room and they're, they're talking together. I guess it's on it's on YouTube. So they had this conversation, um, <laughs> and in which Zucker Zuckerberg said a lot of things, um, <laughs> but he also said, if you want to talk in me metaphors, messaging is like people's living room, and we definitely don't want that. I guess they were talking about WhatsApp and you know the plans to merge that and shit. Um, and we definitely don't want a society where there's a camera in everyone's living room. To which, of course, Citrain pointed out, this is the register, uh, of course, uh, pointed out that Facebook is literally selling a new device, Portal, that is an internet-connected camera for people's living rooms. Z Zuck sort of, sort of recovered by noting his, devi his device uses encryption. Yes, so the... So the data that's going to Facebook service and from there to the FBI, the CIA, the NSA, and everybody else, it's at least encrypted why it goes to the Facebook service. Great. Thanks, Zuck. Uh, fuck's sake. The, the, the gal and the hypocrisy that these people have. I mean, Zuckerberg is one of the worst. I mean, at least the other like kind of CEOs of these tech companies, they... They kind of know what they're doing uh, when it comes to public speaking. All the day, they know that they can't do it and they shut up. But Zuckerberg is kind of, he's, oh my God. I don't want to go into ad hominem attacks, but he is creepy looking. That guy is creepy looking. Like if you look, if you if you just watch a video, I'm going to, I haven't seen this video before. I'm just going to put that on, so turn the volume off so don't, we don't hear him talk. But just look at the guy. He sits like a fucking robot. Like Brent Spiner, when Brent, okay, so the the Harvard guy is obviously like, yeah, 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 I'm like a, I'm some Silicon Valley dude. He could be like an editor for The Verge, the way he looks. But Zuckerberg, the way he sits, like Brent Spiner used all his acting to make Data look like an android. They could have casted this guy. He looks, he, fuck, just look at the haircut. I mean, the guy's a billionaire. He can't, can't he like get a proper haircut? Ah. Uh. Lieutenant Commander Zuck. Yeah, I, I kind of I kind of get that. But like my problem is I really like Data, right? Data is a lovable character. He wants to be human. This is a guy who is human and doesn't want to be human, as far as I can tell. Yeah, look at those look at those creepy eyes, man. I can't I can't watch that. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Facebook. I mean, come on. Um. <laughs> Anyway, let's let let's stop these attacks on people. Although I f I think it's kind of fair. He's a billionaire. He, he should be able to take it. He can cry himself to sleep in a bed made of dollar bills. Um. <laughs> um anyway, let's 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 move on. Um. <laughs> this is this is dissolving into randcast. Um. I wanted to give you tech news. So let's give you tech news. Um. Pharonix is reporting that in, uh, Intel has released a. Uh, what I call a shiny new Vulcan overlay layer in in the Mesa driver. This is, I guess, um, like a like a hood for um, uh, for like the OpenGL driver, where you can uh, you can you can see like data from the from from the driver. And it's it's <laughs> Reem says definitely deep deep inside of the uncanny valley. Yeah, that's that's where he comes from. <laughs> um, yeah, so it, it shows you uh, data on the uh, on the Mesa drivers, and it's 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 part of uh, it's part of Vulkan. Like it's um, they're definitely committed to Vulkan, and Intel has has, has tweeted this um, this story and has said there are um, you know proud to support Mesa 3D 
and uh, they submitted a new Intel OpenGL driver called Iris Iris to the Mesa.org project and will be supporting five gen uh, Intel Core platforms and newer. So uh, it looks like they uh, they're not uh, cutting short on their Linux graphic support, which is great. Also, like Vulkan sounds like a, looks like a really good really good thing for Linux, although like the take up really isn't there like in the in the gaming landscape as far as i can tell um it's it's still it's still all direct x isn't it but um yeah something to keep an eye on <laughs> say that too often i can't remember dan used to say that about every topic with linux outlaws um some um some security news some some a, ba a bad story from microsoft land so microsoft as i said you know they had patch day early in the week um and uh, there's there's one thing which i mean microsoft sometimes does this they patched a, a denial of service vulnerability in iis so internet information services i would say who who the hell uses that at, as their web server but a hell of a lot of people do like medium-sized companies a lot of those um, you see a lot of IIS error pages on the web still. And um, so there is a bug which can be which can be exploited, I guess, to have denial of services attacks. But Microsoft apparently doesn't think this is a security issue because they fixed this um, with one of their non-security updates. They do that sometimes, you know, they're pushed out with the patch day updates and nobody really noticed um, somebody tipped the register off to this, and I've, I've seen other other stories on this. Um, there is um, oh, I'm getting labor news from Jay Poser. Apparently, another MP has defected. Labor reports former MP Joan Ryan over alleged data breach. Oh, this is breaking news. So labor, this is this is what is this? The Guardian. Okay, let's let's look that. Let's see if we can, if we get breaking news on this story, uh, on this show. Let's let's get into that. I think we have the time today. There is, uh, is that not that much happening? No, I don't want the international. Um, do I look in? Jesus Christ, Guardian, might. Do I look international to you? <laughs> Probably do fake an Australian accent so where where is this story god Christ their website is like you can't find anything Who, okay let's search where's the search uh, what's her name look this up uh, John Ryan um, life life searching on this website okay here we go here we go Labour reports former MP John Ryan over alleged data breach. Labour has reported its former MP John Ryan to the Information Commissioner's Office, though she strongly denies accessing party systems to contact members after resigning from the party on Tuesday to join Breakaway Independent Group. It is understood the party has informed the Commissioner about the alleged breach and that it intends to submit a full report. Suspicions about the breach prompted party officials to shut down its key canvassing software. The two tools shut down on Wednesday were Contract Creator, which is a party canvassing software, and Organize. Content Creator identifies specific people in a constituency that candidates can target with messages. Exactly the kind of thing you want to you wanna have if you found a new party, to be honest. Yeah, anyway, so uh, thanks to Jay Poser for that. Um, more, more news on that forthcoming. I will be keeping an eye on this story. Anyway, Microsoft... Um, fixing this uh, DOS, DOS vulnerability. Um, they fixed it for Windows Server 2016 um, and Windows 10, which were apparently affected. So this is a um, HTTP2 problem, um, which has like a, a, what's called a settings frame. And basically you can specify any number of settings parameters and uh, when you're contacting an IIS server and this this is not something the server would expect so it kind of crashes it's like oh my god I can't deal with all these settings I'm dead now um now the problem a little bit is Microsoft nobody knows about this because Microsoft patched this but the patch is um, that you can now as an administrator set thresholds 
on the number of HTTP2 settings. But Microsoft has not supplied um, a default. So they have given you the ability as an admin to do this, but they have not set anything by default. Microsoft often does this. Now, it's not a problem, but the, you have to do it yourself. But the problem is Microsoft hasn't told anybody about this. Um, so there's there's now, but there's no support articles about this. And, um, but there's no GUI. Uh, they tell you how to do it, but basically you have to edit specific registry keys. And um, if you're running an IS server, first of all, may God have mercy on your soul. Uh, secondly, you should better, you should go and look this up and, and, and set some thresholds there because otherwise somebody will bomb your server out of the internet. And that's pretty much it for today. One last story, um, to have you go kind of a, kind of a fun story. I've reported on this, um, talked about dirt rally, um, Golem had a preview of this. They have now reviewed it, um, because it's actually, so it's, it's looking good. It's looking really good. Um, dirt rally one was excellent. And uh, it's coming out on 26th of February. But if you bought the deluxe version, which like includes like the first DLC, I think, then you can play it from today, which I guess why the um, the embargo was lifted on this. And it looks really good. Um, they're going to put out DLC. So they have some new uh, tracks that are supposed to be really cool. Um, like in, I think, was it? Uh, this is like one in New England and then one in Argentina. And uh, they also have like the old tracks, uh, Monte Carlo, Sweden and Germany, uh, the Panzerplatte, they will come in with um, with a DLC. Um, it looks great. They're saying the, so the new um, the new uh, Phil Mills, so the guy uh, who's doing co-piloting, a very famous rally co-pilot, he's doing the announcements, it's supposed to be a lot better than the first game. Um, the only, um, it looks like a really cool game, the only... Um, little caveat um, Golem uh, put on this. Um, I think this is Mike, M Michael Witzorek. Yes, writing for Golem. Um, the only um, caveat they put on this is that it is, they made it a bit easier. So it's, they, they, they say they weren't running off the, not really a lot easier, the learning curve still there, um, especially if you take like one of the fast cars, but it's like they weren't, they weren't running off the track quite so often. Um, and, uh, looks like a, that they made it a bit more like accessible for normal people and not only hardcore race enthusiasts um i would be um reem says i think i need to buy this but i don't think it has vr support the first one worked really well with vr um they built in vr support quite early i think um yeah i uh i have 160 hours i think in the first dirt rally really love it i i would love to take a look at this i'm currently don't really have the resources to buy this i did ask uh code masters uh, this morning on twitter if i can have a review copy so if they sent me one uh, i'll be i'll be happy to have a look at it i'll write a review and i'll tell you about it maybe also in this show since we reported on this a uh, lot but certainly in geek news radio um i will talk about it um, once I, I, I mean, I, I will buy it at some point, but I just can't currently. Um, so if they don't send me a review copy, I'll just have to wait a little bit. Um, but it looks, it looks really fun. Um, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of rallying. Um, I love that sport. Um, it's much more interesting to me than stuff like Formula One or, you know, touring cars. Um, I find it really, really cool. Uh, and this game, the first game was amazing fun. Um, I just stopped playing it at some point because I basically hit my my skill ceiling. Like I couldn't do any better, and then like couldn't do any faster cars. I would wasn't be wasn't able to cope with that. So I'd be really interesting how like the changes um, deal with that. Like you deal with the learning curve and stuff. And I've I don't ha really have the space for a, um, steering wheel. I think. Now that I'm like a freelancer and this is my job, I, I will actually buy one at some point. But like, I don't have a big desk. And there's already like a hotel on here, you know, already here for Elite Dangerous. I got the, I got, I got the hotel, of course, everywhere. Wait, here, right, got that. So, uh, desk is quite full. But um, the, the first one was really playable with the controller as well. Like, I used to play that with a PS3 controller on my PC. Um, it's better than Richard Burns rally says. I think Dirt Rally is the best rally game by far. It's, it's the it's I think it's the 
spiritual successor to Colin McRae rally from uh, from Codemasters. Really enjoyed. Anyway, that's that's it. Um, didn't see anything anymore. Um, got to run now because I got to write about this IIS uh, vulnerability. And I will see you on Monday for some more tech news. Um, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. And until then, um, thanks uh, for listening. Thanks for watching. Thanks for taking part in the chat. I appreciate it. Have, have a nice day and uh, see you next week. Goodbye.